Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be creating a star rating module in Figma. If you'd like to save time and download the source file for this component, check the link in the description that will take you to my store. Now let's get started with the design. First thing we're going to do is select the star tool and create a star. I'm going to zoom to 100% by pressing command 0 so that we can see how big this actually is. Uh, this is definitely way too big for a star, so I think it could be around this big, 40 pixels, something like that. And we're gonna also round corners, approximately like this. We're gonna also change this angle, and yeah, this seems about right. I'm gonna select it, and then go over here to create a component from this. I'm gonna name this component star and I'm gonna create two more states, two more variants. I'm gonna select this whole component and then go to properties over here and rename this property state with values default, active and press, right? At this moment when the star is not selected, it's just there to be eventually selected, it's gonna be gray, right? When you actually select a star, when you actually click on a rating, it's gonna be like this yellow color to show that this is the rating you committed. And then we're gonna go for something similar with the very last one. We're gonna select yellow as well, but we're gonna make this a bit darker, about this dark, and then I'm gonna select the star, press the K tool, make the star a bit smaller, right? About like this. This means that when you press down the star, it's gonna shrink a little so that you can show that there is some kind of interactivity there, that it responds to your uh, actions. And I'm gonna then go to prototype, select the middle star, the hover one, right? First press V to go back to the selection tool and then just connect the middle one with the last one. And I'm gonna say while pressing, change to state press. Now, I'm gonna go over here to assets and use an instance of this star component. And then I'm gonna duplicate that four times. We have five stars in total. Then I'm gonna also use the text tool to say rate. This is gonna be 20. It's gonna be right next to these stars with the spacing of approximately uh, 11, let's say. I'm gonna select all of these and press Shift A to create an auto layout. I'm gonna name this auto layout stars. And additionally, I'm gonna select all of this and press Shift A again to create a star rating module like this. The spacing, yeah, will be around 10. I'm gonna select the text object that says rate. I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna just type in uh, reset. And we're gonna change this font a little bit. It's gonna be all caps, it's gonna be heavy, it's gonna be smaller, significantly smaller. We're gonna have some letter spacing and we're gonna have an underline, right? So we have five stars, we have the rate, and we have reset. And this whole thing is an auto layout. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger, this font, let's say 14. And actually it's not gonna be underlined, but we're gonna create a tiny little button like this with some padding, it'll be like this, right? I'm gonna actually create a component from this, which means removing it from here, turning it into a component, and then use an instance of this right here, so that when we want to make up our mind and we want to make this button, for example, red, we can easily change it right here. I'm gonna name this component reset button, and I'm gonna place it over here, below these stars. Now I'm gonna select the star rating module and go over here to create a component from this. Now we're gonna create six variants in total, right? So I'm gonna go for that. That's two, three, four, five, and six. At first, I'm gonna remove the stars from all the remaining variants and I'm gonna go over here to create a property called, again, state. We're gonna go for, this is the default. This one's gonna be one underscore temporary. This is gonna be called two underscore temporary and similar here, three temporary, four and five. What I'm gonna do now is select the very first star, go to prototype, and then click this icon and drag that over here. And this one is gonna say while hovering, right? So while hovering, change to state temporary, one temporary. Similar with two, three, four, and five, right? Makes sense. Now, 
At this point, I'm gonna select the stars auto layout. Press copy, command C, and then press all of these, select all of these, and press command V. Also, I'm gonna have to make sure it's in the correct order, which means moving this to the top of the auto layout so that we get this. You can see that this is a bit confusing, but it's all gonna make sense. I'm gonna just make this a little bit larger and I'm gonna select in the one underscore temporary, I'm gonna select the first star and then go for active. And then similarly here, I'm gonna go active with the first two. You probably get the point right now at this point, four and five. So why have we done this? The reason for this is that we actually want to make sure that when you hover over, for example, over the star number three, it will take you over here, which means that's why we have the hover interaction. And then additionally, from there, if you are in this state and then hover over this one, this star number four, oops, it's gonna take us right here. Right? So that's the reason why we have done this. The next step will be creating the permanent dates, right? So I'm gonna select all of these where there are active stars. I'm gonna press Alt or Option and then click and drag to create more dates. Then I'm gonna select all of these, press Enter, go to Prototype, deselect all the things that are not the stars, right? So I have only the stars selected. And once I have only the stars selected, I'm gonna press Enter again and then remove these interactions, hover and click. And the next thing I need to do now is when you go over here to the states, you can see that we have this interaction right here, which is a hover interaction of a variant pointing to itself. And it gets a little bit buggy. It doesn't work the way we intended to. So I'm gonna remove this interaction, right? No need for star number one to be point pointing to a variant number one. And then same with two, three, four, and five. And additionally, there is a mistake that we have to correct, which is instead of setting all of these interactions to while hovering, we set them to on click. So let's change that to while hovering. And now we can move on. So what I did here, I again selected all of these stars auto layouts and then pressed enter. And additionally, I changed all of these. There was a click interaction, so I changed that all of that to while hovering, right? Now let's go through each of these states and actually set a click interaction that will take you to a permanent state over here. So I'm gonna just name this one underscore permanent, similar here, two underscore permanent, three permanent, four permanent, and five permanent. I'm gonna select the first one over here and then go to prototype and click, do an on-click interaction, change to state one. Uh, similar here, so second star goes over here, third star goes over here, fourth goes here, and fifth goes here. Now we actually need to do this thing where we tell the user what's the current rating they are selecting. So just to add some interactivity there, and I'm gonna change this color of this second part to be slightly lighter, so a bit gray. And I'm gonna just use this everywhere and change the numbers. We're gonna also paste that over here, right? And but but we're gonna change this number one to heavy and change the color to yellow so that we can kind of show, all right, so this is the rating you have actually selected. We're gonna make this a little bit darker like this. Copy and then paste, paste everywhere. Just change the number. Which means this is the final result you wanna you wanna get, right? So on this side you have black and white text and here you have a yellow or a golden one to show that this has been committed. I'm gonna hide the reset button in all of these variants over here. So I'm gonna just select them like this, deselect these and then just hide them, right? No need to have a reset button when no rating has been selected. 
Then I'm gonna go over to prototype over here with this reset button selected and I'm just gonna set up this interaction where if you click the reset button, it will take you back to the initial state. I'm gonna go over here to this reset button and change the look a little bit. So it's gonna be, gonna have a stroke, it's gonna have a fill that's gonna be black, but it's gonna be transparent like this. So that's the final look. And I have set up a test frame over here, which means to do this, you have to select the frame tool, create a new frame like this. This frame is gonna be like 1000 by 600. We're gonna rename this test frame and then go over to assets search for star rating module, click and drag it over here, center that against the frame. And I'm gonna also add this to an auto layout with a stroke to create some borders. I'm gonna be around it a little bit and it's gonna be a bit transparent like this. Then I'm gonna launch the prototype to test our component. So this is the current result we get. Now we can hover over these, you can see that these numbers over on the right side change to reflect where we are. We can click a rating, we get a confirmation that that's the rating we left. We get a reset button that we can reset this with and leave a new rating. So this looks good, although I think it could be improved by turning this reset button to a button with an icon. So let's do that. Let's actually create an ellipse like this. Then let's do a stroke, two pixels, center. And let's remove one of these, create a triangle. So a polygon tool, flatten, gonna be black and it's gonna have, this is the way it's gonna look. We're gonna group this, command X, command B, hide this, or remove this all together, and then flip this and turn it into a frame. Uncheck clip content, set all of these to right, select the frame and just do right. Maybe we wanna remove the fill. We wanna make this very subtle. Uh, this whole button could be like way narrower, like this, for example. Let's check this out. And maybe let's, let's use a fill with no stroke, actually, just to make it a little bit different and differentiate that from the rest of the component. Yep, looks good. 12, let's make it smaller so like this. And here is the result. The reset button now looks different. So that's the overall advantage of using the component-based approach because, for example, what we could do now, if you wanted to make these stars blue, let's say, you could just change it over here and over here and all of a sudden you have blue stars. We don't want blue stars, we want yellow stars, which means that this is good to go. And that's it. I'm aware that this tutorial has been a bit complicated, so if there is anything unclear, let me know in the comments below and I will clarify and explain. And if you'd like to download the source file for this interactive component, check the link in the description and leave a like if you'd like to see more interactive components like this. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.